Good to have all you guys with us. Good to have you guys here as well. And so uh, we're going to walk through some questions. Uh, we're very glad to have these folks with us. I'm going to let you all introduce yourselves because I want you to tell about your kids, you know, how old they are and that kind of stuff. And, and then uh, that'll kind of get you talking and at least give Aaron a chance to say something. How about that? And then, um, unless, well, unless he goes first, I guess. And then, you know, so we're, and so, um, anyway, we're going to do that. And then we've got some other special things tonight that we're going to do. But uh, so glad to have you guys here. And uh, we really appreciate it. And we've got some really great questions. And so anyway, Troy, we'll let you start. And if you say everything, Aaron didn't have to say anything. But just tell us, <laughs> tell us your, about your family, your kids, ages, like I said. Right. Uh, Troy Hollister. Um, we, I've been a member of FIRST since about 2004. We've been married since 2008. Uh, we have two kids, two boys. Uh, Micah is 10, Kate is 8. And you want to add anything? They're great. Great kids. Great kids. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I've been at the church since 99. Wow. Mark last year. Yeah. Done lots of different seasons. Any single summit for about nine years. Great question. You know, worked my way up. You were here when Brother John was here. Barely. He, the, my first Sunday here, I think, was his last. He saw you and just. <laughs> that was it. Bolted him out. <laughs> so you ran off. <laughs> okay. All right. Kristen, or right. Kirk, or second. Oh. Well, and I'm paying, I'm paying Kirk Piper and my wife. And we have a, we've been at the church. I've been here since 2002, and I think Kristen came in 2004, 2005. Um, and we've been married for about 13 years. And yeah. yesterday, yesterday, yesterday was our oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Usually I'm the one who gets the year on, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so and we have a 10 year old boy named Benjamin and a 8 year old girl named no, wait, 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 wait. Yes, I know. You're about to say it. Eight is eight, eight is eight? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, you can't say that next year, so. Eight is eight, eight is eight. Well, let's go for like, okay, you ready? No time to say hello, goodbye, we're like, we're like, we're like. Okay, sorry. That was uh, third grade, so remember that. All right, here's the first question, um, and I'm just going to let whoever wants to answer it, answer it. Um, if you have something you want to say about it, feel free. Um, but but not everybody has to answer everything if you don't want to. What is one tradition, activity, rhythm? I didn't send you all this one, by the way. Uh, related to discipleship that you wish you had started earlier with your kids. And how did you start it? How did you implement it into your family? So on tradition, activity, rhythm, something related to discipleship that you wish you had started early. Who wants to tackle that one? We're thinking this one I surprised them with because I have some that they've seen and some that they haven't. Good question. Is this with the assumption it's something we are doing? Not necessarily. Yeah. I think if it's something that you just noticed and yeah. wish you'd done earlier. Because one thing that we, I still don't feel like we do a super good job of, but I wish we did, is just praying together as a family mm. on a regular basis. Um, I mean, we do, I mean, we pray at meals and like we pray with the kids at different different times for different reasons, but there's not really like a, a routine of right. that. Um, and that's something that I can, and that may be partly too because that's something that I've, you know, hasn't always been a routine in my own life either. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of something I keep trying to work at, but um, you know, I think that that's something that if we'd started it when the kids were really little, it might have been easier. Um, yes. Get them involved. In it works. It's a really good workout. Okay. You think in the park? I was actually going to say the same thing. I mean, we do pray with them at that time, but I think something I wish we we had done, and I think you do it sometimes too, is to have them pray more too. I mean, and ask them their requests and try to remind them more often of other people's requests and how to pray for other people more often. Um, because sometimes, I don't know, maybe other people think this, but sometimes our hold a lot of things so close to the vest. And if you mm -hmm. ask them in those moments, they don't always say it. Um, so just making them 
helping them feel more comfortable praying out loud together. It's a great word. We just talked to here a little bit about how easy it is when they're babies and they don't even know that you're doing it yet. Mm -hmm. You can start praying for them and they can't even be critical. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Troy, I can, if I can invert the question a little bit, there's a tradition that we, we were talking about just recently that we need to stop doing that we kind of wish we could find a way to do it again. Okay. Um, our boys used to be in the same bedroom mm -hmm. and it was really easy then because we'd, we'd put them to bed like when they were like three and five or something and put them to bed and we'd read to them, right? So we'd read, you know, some, you know, Curious George book or something like that. And then put that down and we'd read the Bible together, put the lights out and I just sit in there with them and read. And once we've split their bedrooms, now they have mm -hmm. each have their own room, you can kind of, we just don't do that anymore. It's logistically different. And you know, so we've kind of lost that tradition of reading the Bible together as a family right before bed. And we're not quite sure what the rhythm or ritual is. Yes. Like that's Those rhythms are, once you get into one, you're in it. Once you get out of it, you're out of it. You know, pretty deep right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I'm here for. Okay. Question number two. Do you have any, and this is one that I think everybody is just waiting for you to answer with bated breath. Are you ready? <laughs> this may be the question of the night. This may be the price of admission right here. Do you have any discipline fails? <laughs> what did not work with your preschooler that you would be willing to share? So this is when you sent us ahead of time. <laughs> and what I wrote down on the front of this, I'm out of order, but oh, here we go. <laughs> I, did, I, um, I wrote down everything that worked with the other kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good answer, though. But real, I mean, because, right. you know, I mean, I'm sure there are some things that we did that didn't work, but I don't feel like there's one thing that's just glaring at me that's like, oh man, like we totally blew it on that. I mean, certainly there were plenty of individual moments um, of that, but you know, on the whole, they seem to be turning out to be reasonably okay with me in general so far. You know, <laughs> so, um, but um, you know, they are just really different. I mean, everything that we did, like with my the first one. As an infant, we, you know, let him cry it out, and he slept through the night at six weeks old, and or eight, whatever it was, very young age, and was a great sleeper. And with the second one, I was like nursing him to sleep until he was two, and he slept Ooh, in the God. swing until he couldn't sit it anymore. I know that's not a discipline thing, but they're just, they're just very different personalities. Yeah. And so the second time around, it wasn't like, oh man, we got it now. It's the second time. It's like, oh, figure it all over again. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. And we were, we were the same way. We, we were patting ourselves on the back. Of Don't let breath. that first kid bully you. <laughs> <laughs> they bully you and trick you in having a second. <laughs> and so yeah, we, and we, and we were feeling good about, you know, about our dogs and parents. And then our second came along, and and they are wonderful. Yeah, and Tessa and Tessa did everything that we had ever done, and did with, with Sam with Benjamin, and so and we and we had to completely change our and our discipline with with her because and half the time we we're just we were, she's just like I'm pouring and pulling the fire, <laughs> and then just like we we were and we have. We have a hole in the wall. <laughs> 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 not, <laughs> not from us. <laughs> <laughs> and from and from kicking in and out. And so we just had to, and so it's just kind of a we we you, you have to adjust and try to figure out what works for each each individual thing and kid because what worked for and for one will not work for the other enough. And or what works best for one will work for the other. No. And I think too, I mean you can read all the books and then and listen to all the people. And I mean, that's all good, right? You want that wisdom and you want to be looking at God's word for that too. But you also just need to be in prayer because when he uses your kids to remind you that you are not in control and remind you every day that you are a sinner, <laughs> saved by grace, like for everything you're pointing out in your child, it's just you might as well be looking in the mirror because they're learning it from somewhere. So I think, <laughs> I mean, not to fool you all. <laughs> no, but, um, but you know, I don't know. I think. 
think it's just there's such a refining that goes on through this process and and apologizing. I mean, and, and admitting when you lost your temper or uh, because you model that for them. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like my kids are pretty good at after they've calmed down or had a moment, they'll come back and apologize to me. Um, and I hope some of that is because I've apologized to them when I reacted poorly. And they don't always apologize to each other well, but we're working on that. <laughs> but I think that's the, I think it's the big thing. And I mean, of course, social media is great and all people are great, but you just have to be praying about what's going to work for you. Ask your friends to just know that what works for their kids or your first one or one or third or fourth isn't going to work. And just look to the Lord for wisdom. Is there a particular time you can think of when you had a reaction to something that you went back and apologized for that you're willing to share? Can it be recent? Sure, sure okay. absolutely. Okay, I mean, because they're minor, I think you said 10 and 8, so not technically preschool, um, but yes, we, the day before the last day of school in May, so I mean, everybody's been home, everybody's all been doing school and work and all things, um, and <laughs> they, uh, one, one of them, was just starting to push buttons. And I had commented that this particular child had um, had a really great time during the stay at home. I think maybe just sitting at home just kind of helped with some different things, took out some of the stresses. There were a lot of stresses at it. But anyway, we um, had gone to an parent to get something for the last day of school. And I don't even remember what it was, but something happened and I just completely lost it. I think just with all of the, you know, all of the end of school things that were happening. And I was driving down the road and afterwards I actually thought, <laughs> If someone videoed me, like, I'm going to be viral on <laughs> social media. Like, I actually, for the next several days, was kind of watching, like, did someone see me? Because I was going, <laughs> this one, six, two, two, ninety, six, ten, I was just grabbing the steering wheel and just, like, <sighs> and they're both in the back, and I'm crying, and they're crying, everyone's crying. And I just, like, later, I went back, and I was like, I was so wrong. You know, but sometimes emotions do bubble up, but I think that's what's important is teaching them, like, you have big emotions, we have big emotions, we have to take those to the Lord, we have to apologize, and we have to ask the Lord to help us deal with those in a healthy way, unlike your mother today. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great, that's a great example. We talked one week about this idea of rupture and repair, which is one of my favorite things, because it reminds me that God never thought we would be perfect, and so rupture repair is basically the idea, if we do anything to hurt our kids, we lose our temper, or we just you know, we get angry, we just, whatever, we just, ah, um, then if we go back to them and tell them that we're sorry, the relationship is actually stronger than if we had never done these things in the first place. And in that grade of God to create it, to kind of set the deck in our favor, where when we make a mistake, we get ahead. Yes. And so I just, I love that idea because there's no perfect parents. We all do stuff that we regret, and uh, I've done a ton, and every time I get ready to teach class like this, I think, thanks, man, you bring everything back I ever wish I hadn't done, you know, but it's good for God to know we don't have to be perfect, and so that's good. What's the biggest challenge you have raising your kids? Um, how do things change when your kids, <laughs> specifically, how do things change when they went to school? So let's, let's talk about that transition from preschool to school. What was your biggest challenge there? And then just the biggest challenge you you found as parents and, and at this age of, of being about five years ahead of where these kids, these guys' kids are going to be. When they go to school, they're they're in their own environment, right? You know, you might have like a preschool or a daycare or something, but school is just different because they are doing all, they're doing the work. It's mm -hmm. their work. And so they'll come home with a project or something like, oh, you got to build a model of a whale. That sounds fun. And there's this temptation to like, <laughs> oh, you could do this and this. I'm like, no, it's your thing. And they have to start being their own person in their own environment with their own friends. And so it's just this brand new thing that I want to get in there and like, oh, no, you should do it a different way because this will be better. And just like letting them live through all of those things. That's a big, big change. And watching them kind of become who they will be the rest of their lives. And that, like our, our, our fifth grader, he's in logic school now, so he wears a little, he has to wear a, a jacket and a tie. And, like I'll get up and I'll be sitting there eating his breakfast and he looks like a little stockbroker or something, <laughs> you know? And it's just, 
I was the first day of school looking at him like, man, he, he's growing up. And like, I wasn't expecting to, like, you know, your dad's not supposed to cry on the first day of school, right? <laughs> um, but just kind of watching him, you know, that's a big step of maturity to now he's like picking up his backpack and his lunch pail and going to school, right? Going to school, uh, no, no, or, or, or any, or, or just a big challenge. A big yeah. challenge. And the biggest challenge is, is and seeing and seeing how God sees us. Because they, because mm-hmm. we, because mm-hmm. they're, and your kids are, and our kids are just, and they're incredibly self-involved. And, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and so, and so it's just a, and. And you're realizing that how God sees us because they am patient and graceful and 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 great and gracious and merciful and 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 sometimes I'm not the and that's not the things and I need to be able to and model and how God treats us and and so and so that could be it's rough to be and gracious and merciful and 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 and, and selfless. I hate to piggyback off on that. I grew up in a really legalistic environment. My parents weren't so much, but the church around us was. And I think just helping the kids balance and see themselves. I mean, that's what you're saying. Is it helps us see who we are, but also helping them see who they are in Christ. That you know they don't they don't have to try to measure up because I feel like that's what I spend my life doing is doing all these things, even though I know that that's not how I'm saved. It's still like a internal struggle. So help I just realized that kind of even this week. Like, oh, they're holding themselves to some pretty high standards because we hold them the high standards, but I want them to know that it's okay if we don't always meet those standards. Like we're not they're not trying to earn anything. We want you to have high standards so you can glorify God in what you do, but not to earn favor from us or from God. That's a really good word. That that brings up a, a question that I didn't have on here, but but somebody had sent me and I really want to ask it is has there ever been a time that you can think of that, and Troy kind of hinted at this, where you let your kids fail, just you knew, oh, that's not the way I would do it, but you let them do it to learn a lesson? Have you ever, I mean, something specific? Can you remember anything? Um, I feel like I don't know if any of the instances, like recently, I feel like with our fifth grader, the school has kind of become mm. a thing because. Well, and just to kind of like paint the picture, when we talk about school, our kids go to a private Christian school that's part on campus and part on school. Um, so that has brought a whole other level of crazy to that too. But, um, <laughs> but our fifth grader is now in like the upper school. And so it goes from more of the parent at home being not so much a teacher as just kind of a guide or coach. coach yeah coach supervisor and so he's he's a lot more accountable to his teachers mm-hmm. himself now um instead of you know it's a lower grade i'm kind of responsible for getting the kid through all over again but so he's we've had some days where i'll say hey you know you need to it's 9 a.m 10 a.m you know you haven't started your your homeschoolers yet and He's goofing around, and so, I mean, there there have been some points where I've had to go, okay, you know, I'm not going to say anything anymore, mm-hmm. so if you don't do it, you're going to have to go tell your seven teachers tomorrow that you didn't do your work, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and it being kind of that, like, type A, check all the boxes personality, it's really hard for me to not just, like, sit next to him and put my thumb on him and go, no, we're going to get it, but, um, you know, but he... He has had some days. I don't know if he, like, I've almost been a little disappointed that if there hasn't been an ornamental pool on that because, you know, you kind of want to, like, <laughs> 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 that's it now. You know, there's been a couple of days where I was like, oh, I'm going to stop pounding him about it. And he's going to have to get a zero on all of this and he's really going to learn the lesson. And then, like, he kind of rallies me and say, But he has had some days. <laughs> like, figure it out now and fix it. Great. Yeah, um, but he has had some days where I've let that happen.
happen and then it's like dinner time or five o'clock and he wants to be outside playing with everyone else who's done and he's in his room crying because he has three more subjects and they're all taking four times as long as he planned on and you know so there's been some things that's not I mean it's not the hugest thing in the world but it is kind of a lesson that that he's we see him starting to learn like I've noticed in the mornings he does get started a little bit and he said you know this stuff takes me longer than i thought it would so you know it takes a you know we're you know middle of november now so we're several months in but it's starting to starting to click right it's a great example yeah i guess it's kind of a small example but um we've our we have one that loves to spend money and one that's a saver and talks about paying for college. Like I said, it's just funny how different people are. Um, but one of them loves to spend money. And it's not just on themselves. They like to buy gifts and all kinds of stuff for people. But this one also loves office supplies, which are fun, I admit. But not all office supplies are created equal. <laughs> so I took the chance. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of money. So we went to Family Dollar. And it was so exciting because there were all these things and what they really wanted was one of those white out pink mm -hmm. things. And I had made the comment, you get what you pay for. Like dollar stores are great for certain things, but again, not everything. And this person was so determined to buy this. So I thought, you know what? There's only one way to learn this. And it's hard because I don't make your money. But this person bought this and went home and it subsequently failed and everything went everywhere and it was terrible. But so, but that person now says, when we go into a store, they'll look at all the supplies and they'll say, hmm, I think I might want to buy a better one. <laughs> I think that is a great idea. That is so It's going to cost me a little bit more. So, I mean, even in something little like no, that, it's it's little. Little. I mean, I know it's kind of silly, but I always think those are good. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> that's, that, that's a great word. That's a great word. Okay, next question. How do you keep your family involved in church? When schedules start to get crazy. We're here. Like, to, like today. <laughs> like today. Like, like, yeah. Whatever you're it supposed to be on the Yeah, which is true. Like all of us, I think, have had, it was like, you know, there's always the one week where everything you're involved in schedules is the same and not the same. Um, today. Yeah, today. Because that day. Yeah. Um, but we, yeah, so. We actually talked about this, and it kind of helped helped me. I hadn't really thought about it, but it was kind of fun to explore the question because one of the things Troy and I talked about is the thing that keeps us coming to church is that we have um, responsibilities and relationships mm -hmm. at church. So we we actually haven't really been a part of a like marrying class for. Years. For most um, of the time, we were we been married. Well, actually. that's true. Um, mm. But you know, he teaches a single adult class, and I help in third grade. Yeah, third grade. Um, and so we have to be here because we have a job, and people are depending <laughs> on us. You know, um, but but it's not just the the drudgery. That's not you know, I've got to be there. I've got to do this. But you know in the course of doing that and we've been at the church a long time and we have relationships and so there's that like we we want to see people and i mean even um you know serving in first kids i don't necessarily come for the kids i mean i do because i'm committed <laughs> to it but that's it's not my like sweet spot in ministry it's just there's kind of a need so i do it but the staff are amazing and tons of fun <laughs> and really pour into the volunteers. And so it makes me like, oh, well, I'm gonna get, you know, I'm going to get to see them and make jokes. And I know that they're counting on me, so I want to be there. Um, and so that has really made it, I mean, I can think of plenty of times, especially when I was single, where I came here for myself. And so there were there were times where I had a crazy work week, so I just slept in on Sunday or, you know, because I didn't have to be here for any particular reason, but we are a lot more consistent now, even though, you know, with, especially, I mean, when you have little kids, it is, I mean, it's just like a whole circus to get here, but, but like our kids started to, to be involved too, and they want to be here. And so, um, 
when they get to know the, the teachers and the kids in the room that they're with, like you're not going to get to know, you're not gonna, your kids aren't going to build those relationships unless they're here a lot, mm -hmm. right? And so they're not going to want to come if they don't know anybody, right? And if they're only coming Sunday morning, you know, they get like an hour, maybe three hours a week, and then you miss a Sunday here or there. It's not a lot of time. But if you're here and not advertising for the church, right? But come here, you come Sunday okay. morning, anytime the doors are open, right? But, but no, the more you're here, the more you want to be here. And, and that's a big, big deal. And we want our kids to love the people of God. And we want our kids to love being around the people of God. And so we do a lot of things here. And then when we're not in this building, we're doing things with people that are members of this church too. Yeah. So we're always around the people of God. And that's good. And I think it's contagious. That's a good word. And I, yeah. <laughs> contagious. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I not contagious. a good word. Trigger word. Sorry. <laughs> too oh. many things are contagious. Just kidding. Yeah. I think part of too what kind of enables that all to happen too is we kind of keep our our framework of commitment, kind of the, the structure of it, pretty simple, you know, because there's lot, there might be lots of different things going on, but almost all of our commitments either stem from our jobs, church, or our kids' school. Mm -hmm. And so we're not doing like, we're not involved in, you know, like eight different things so that something has to <coughs> go all the time. Like we just kind of, I mean, we say no to, to things too, even with just that, but. Mm -hmm kind of the broad things that you sort of commit yourself to, um, just keeping that simple, I think, has really helped. Because I'm like, we're introverts and not high capacity people. And so, you know, just having a room for margin so that, like, there's sometimes where, like, this week is really busy and we, you know, have had all these, like, conferences and all different details of who's getting who, where, and when, and when we're eating and what clothes they need and, you know, all sorts of things. But, um, you know, on most weeks, there's kind of just a little bit of extra time where if a friend needs help getting her kids somewhere, I can give them a ride or, you know, yeah, we <laughs> living next door to someone who has almost the same life as you also is very helpful. <laughs> By the way, I didn't know they lived next door to each other. <laughs> I found that out tonight and I was like, okay. Well, we are only here. Why we, we stayed on the block there? So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and can we can we run? Which question prioritize church? Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I think in first of all, I think it has to be a priority. And, and when and when we went to Midnight Madness, they were talking about it. it of being able to have and your kids need to have relationships with same with me with same with us and as like parents like four and like three or four adults that and that are pouring into their lives that they're going to have a relationship with and and if they have that they're probably not going to walk away from the church and and so we're going to aim to make sure that our kids are are praying here to have connections with 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 same with some adults praying from the church and also with same and like minded same kids. That then they're gonna hold them accountable and, and keep them here. And and when when they graduate from high school and go to college, they're going to have those relationships where they're going to be able to stay and talk to people and be able to stay and have and have those people being able to encourage them to keep walking and keep them up. So it's, it's right. Yeah. That's what we're doing. And I think just as far as making the priority, like that's just it's a non negotiable in our week is pretty much what we said on Sunday morning. So we wouldn't, I mean, our kids are not sports stars, so we basically don't have that issue. But <laughs> if they if they were, I think we just kind of talked and said in our family that would be a rule that we wouldn't do us we wouldn't sign up for a particular team that would cause us to to miss on a regular basis that we couldn't be involved. And we tried to be intentional about our areas of service too. So I mean we serve in fourth grade on Sunday mornings and I just like Sure. And then we um, yeah. are <laughs> table leaders for discipleship essentials. Um, we've done that now for several several years, and I think that has honestly been probably one of the biggest helpful influences. In addition to our school, but I think discipleship essentials has equipped us in a way that nothing else we've done to pour into our kids because we're memorizing verses, we're 
reading our Bible every day and not for hours. You know, we have a short, simple thing that we do, and um, we learn how to share a testimony in four minutes or less, and we learn how to, a simple, effective way to draw out the gospel. And so us doing that with our, our adults in <laughs> DE, we practice some of those things at home, and our kids can see that, and so they know what it is, they know it's important, and they, they start to kind of copy those things. If they know you take notes when you read your Bible, then they can do that too. That's so good. And, and DE, we call it Milestones 101, it's the first book. And so if you ever, uh, if there's a semester you ever want to jump into that, just look for Milestones 101 and that'll, that'll be the class that uh, Chris is talking about. But yeah, that is, that is really good. Okay, one last question. Okay, what single piece of advice or resource other than the Bible and church itself has been the most helpful to you in discipling your preschooler? And I'm going to add with that another question that said book, podcast, websites, anything that you would recommend, just kind of resources and helps that you've had uh, that you've just gone, wow, that, we really like that. Um, I've had kind of a uh, love-hate relationship with parenting books. Mostly <laughs> age. Um, so refreshing. I've read, a, I've read a lot of them, or half a lot of them. Uh, yes. Um, I have a lot of them that I wish I have read, but I don't really want to. Um, but when my when my first child was a baby, I read quite a few. And I got to the point where I was just weary because I was like, if I keep reading, there is something I'm doing wrong every moment of every day. <laughs> or this book or that book is the opposite thing. And I just grew weary. There have been two books that I have read that I, like one of them, I just finished reading from the library and might actually buy one to read again. Um, and it's very, it's called, it's Christian Kristen Welch is the author. It's called Raising Grateful Kids in an Entitled World. Mm -hmm. And it it's very practical, and she's a believer, and so it's really about just like having a God-centered home. But she's very real with a lot of their fails, too. Like, this is what we strive to do. Here's what it kind of, you know, like, <laughs> we have the Christmas Advent devotional, and we all got in a fight when I pulled it out. You know, like... <laughs> sister has been the best resource mm -hmm. she's two years older than me but she got married like before she graduated from college and now I think she has nine kids but I haven't seen her in a year so she might have three more we're not really sure she just keeps <laughs> having more kids right but she's got a lot of parenting experience so it's a she's a wonderful resource so um to kind of turn that practical right um you know, look for people that are a little bit farther ahead. Look for um, an, an older couple that has kids that are grown. And you look at those kids like, wow, those kids turned out really well. And you just have conversations with them. Um, my sister gave us great advice when when our second child was born because my, my sister has two boys. Her first two are, are two boys, and they're a about the same difference in age as ours. And she said, they're gonna be best friends and best enemies. Mm -hmm. And it's so true, because they're fighting and yelling at each other. And then one of them will look at the other and then they'll just crack up laughing and it just turns on a dime. They're just, 
fascinating to watch. Um, but she'd already seen that, right? She already knew that. And her boys, her all her kids are all completely different, right? And so she's got to live through all the different seasons. And so we can go to her with a question and just say, oh, yeah, like number three was just like that or you know, whatever. So so give yourself a counsel to go to that, that a few steps ahead and kind of they've seen the different types of personalities and things, the way kids interact and whatever. I think books are great, but they're static, right? But from other people that you can go to, you know, it's interactive and you can gain a lot of wisdom. Which worked for the bikers? Well, and well, and I'll, I'll say, this is saying actually not for preschoolers, but we started off with saying this baby wise. And, mm -hmm. and we, we didn't follow it to we, the letter. Because yeah, yeah. I know it's controversial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. We, have, we used a lot of the techniques. We have four kids. <laughs> it worked to be the best for us. I'm just throwing it out there because I know there's a lot of people that claim it. We love it. But so. there was a very helpful thing. Yeah. And that, that was uh, and the, the, the phrase that we were saying was training for from that was training to mean to go. And and mm -hmm. so and just being able to and just and just know and that you want to teach your kids from him and to start them with small things but then but go from that and go from that because you know, your kids are capable of, of of a lot. And we we tend to as a we you and tend to kind of and Push things off because we think, oh, they're too young. But and but we, and we were talking about earlier today, and like, then like just kind of having them as soon as they're able to carry, and carry, and their plates, and and to the table, or and to and when they're once they're done, and just being and just giving them to do simple things like that, <clears throat> and, and not not doing things like jumping on the bed or <laughs> and. I mean, it's cute and fun when they're little, but it's like when I think about that, I'm like, oh, well, when they're 12, is it as cute? Probably not because it's broken. We've had a broken bed, not really from jumping, but no. And, and so it, and we, we say that and as kind of a, a principle for a lot of things. And, and Chris is more of a reader than I am, so he has all the parenting books. But... I mean, it's kind of felt like the same thing. There's a lot of books that I've started, and then, then I've kind of been like, oh. I don't know. It's kind of like in college when everything is ideal and you go to the real job. It's like, oh, <laughs> this is not perfect, like in this book. So, I mean, I've read a lot. I mean, I, I say a lot, but I've read a number of them. There's a couple that I've finished um, that I would say, I think I'm, I'll just say I'm reading right now, Sticky Things. That is one that Kirk was referencing that they talked about at Midnight Madness. And it's people that did a survey about, um, about what, like why kids are leaving the faith. And talking about just what's important in families and in churches at a young age. And I haven't finished it because it is, I mean, it's about studies, so it's not like it's the most entertaining, but it's also actually really, really, yeah, it's helpful. And then, I don't know, I've been read pieces of how to talk, how to talk to your kids to listen and listen so your kids will talk. Mm -hmm. I think there's a younger kids version of that one. I need to finish that because it's really, I think it's a lot more, but, um, Kids are just some of the big ones. I don't know. I just I hate to be trying to say God's word and then people who are ahead of you. <laughs> no, I guess that's a good word because I know, I, I know and we, we were trying to stick through a couple of books and that we had read and I know when she went they Chris ended up calling her her I think her maid of honor and that and that has older kids and mm -hmm. and, and they're going well up. and so we and we were like and she and she said she will work. Yeah, and so and, and it's like then don't put them, don't put pressure and on yourself and then just read these books and and not everything in this book is gonna work for you. Oh, I have a really specific example. It's not a it's not a discipline book, but if you're going through potty training or have whatever, this is an example of why maybe I think I, I'm hands off on the books a little bit. Because at the time I was potty training my first, everybody, everyone, at least on social media, because that's real, right? But everything there, everybody did the three-day method. Everybody I talked to, everybody was like, this is this. So I downloaded the book, I read it. And I think the book actually said in the beginning, if this doesn't work for you, you're doing it wrong. And so we, wow. yeah, and it, that's it. So I had all this pressure. I'm like, yeah, so, so much pressure. We do the first 
day, and I think I was stood with this, I don't remember if it was the third or second one. The first, I mean, it was bad for both. I tried it with the second one for about two hours, and I was like, forget it. I called my mom and said, what did you do for me? And that is what we did. So with the first one, I tried it for like two or three days, and I was like, I'm doing something wrong. This is all me. This is all me. So please, I mean, if someone's not working for your kid, it doesn't matter if every book, unless it's the Bible, says that you're doing something <laughs> wrong. Literally, don't listen to people. Don't be afraid to shelve something and say that didn't work for us, and be okay, because we were miserable. I mean, Kirk said one time, he said, stop. This is destroying our family, because I was sobbing on the phone with my mom. Our kid was sobbing in the bathroom. Everyone was crying, and I was like, this is supposed to be someone at church, actually, with older kids, said, every kid can do this by the time they go to school. This is a natural thing. You don't want to make this stressful. Right. Just take off the stress. So I've kind of had to take that <laughs> with that. And it's a really crazy example, but well, it worked. That kind of reminds me of something, too. And I was maybe getting a little off the resource question, but there have been times, either by reading something or even sometimes comments, from people where it seems like what you're doing is like I've had there was a situation when um, one of my kids was little and my mom was at my house when I was in throes of trying to handle it for the 467th time and she had to leave in the middle of it and she she sent me a text which she intended to delete but accidentally sent that was pretty critical of how I was handling it and later apologized, but just in that, it was like, and that's not how, I mean, I'm not bragging on my mom. She's, she's great. Um, but it was just this one instant where it was so hurtful and it made me kind of go like, oh, am I really messing this up? But like, I had prayed and prayed and prayed about how to handle this situation with this kid. And he was just not, you know, responding and just, I was doing the best I could and that, you know, looking back, I mean, that was probably at least five years ago. And looking back on it, I can see, like, I think that I was doing what the Lord had led me to do. And she even said later, like, oh, okay, after we talked about it. Like, I can see now, you know, because she was there for 15 minutes when I'd been dealing with this situation day in and day out for months, you know. So just to, like, it's good to have advice from people, but it's also good to know what you're doing with your kid. And... Um, and I think too, just like above all the books, all the advice, everything, it, you just have to pray for wisdom. Um, and that's one thing that I, I know when I have been thinking about something too much and not praying about it because I'm beating my head against the wall and going, I don't know what to do. I can't handle the, the situation. You know, I'm crying in my bathroom <laughs> and, you know, just, but when I remember, okay. I don't, it's not my job to figure everything out. Like, it's my job to ask the Lord how he will, would have me parent this kid. Like, he created this child. He created me as his mom. And um, so really just more than what it, you, other people are doing, more than what the books say you should do, it's just every situation praying. Um, and I just, I think all the time about James 1, you know, just the, the Lord will, give with them generously when we ask him for it. He's always faithful uh, to do that. And sometimes it comes through a book or a piece of advice, um, but just to remember that ultimately it's, it's got to come from him. That's a great word. That's a great word. Let's thank these guys for being here. I mean, we appreciate that. You guys are fantastic. It's such good words. And um, I just, I love all the things that you guys shared. Um, Every kid is different. Every family is a little different. Um, we just do what we do, but I love that we need it that way. Probably an ask for it wisdom. It's good. So, okay, we're going to let these guys go. I know Kurt and Christian have to get back to BE and, and leave the group, and Troy and Aaron have to go be good parents somewhere. So, we'll let them go. So, thank you all for coming. We'll let you guys thank go. You thank you again. Me. And um, you did it. You Yay. made it. So, <laughs> Just wait till somebody asks you to be on a parent panel and you're going to go, what? I'm going to what? I'm going to what? So, you fantastic. Okay. You know, <laughs> no, there's no perfect parent. It's all good. All right. Let me, uh, I want to just share one thing with you guys before we go. This is our last class. Um, we do have course evaluations. Um, if you're online, we will send these to you. Uh, the people in the room are going to give you a, uh,
a paper copy, and if you don't want to do this, we'll send it to you too. Um, but you can do that. Um, but I'm going to, um, you might have passed those out while I talk. And so I just want to share one thing with you uh, really quick before we go. Um, there's a resource if you're online. Brianna's going to put it up so you can get it. If you're here in person, I hope that you got a copy of it. Summit.org. I read an article this week. 69% of kids in church do not have a biblical worldview. That means they do not believe in absolute truth. That means that they are getting their source of truth from anywhere and everywhere. That's a lot of kids in the church. And we could talk about all the reasons why and all that stuff, but here's what it comes down to. As moms and dads, we've got to teach our kids the Bible. But before that, beyond that, with that, we've got to teach our kids that the Bible is true. It is the authority of Scripture that, that the Bible is not just a bunch of ideas. It's not just a, a bunch of opinions. It literally is God speaking truth to us. And so this handout has a place. You can't really see it on there, but I want you to have the wording. And at the bottom of the handout, there's a URL so that you can go to the website, and it will allow you to do a biblical worldview survey. I'd encourage you to do this as a parent. It's a lot of fun. Now, what it's going to do, it's going to ask you these questions, and at the end, it's going to say, what percent of your view is Christian? What percent of your view is Marxist? What percent of your view is atheist? What percent of your view is Islamic? What it's really interesting. There's like five things listed there, and so here's the deal. Just let me say this. If, if yours is not 100% Christian, don't freak out over that. Um, you know, go back and look at that. And sometimes there's things we look at and go, what, what do I really believe? There are resources on summit.org that will help you in discipling your child with a biblical worldview. But here's the thing. Your child will make decisions based on their biblical worldview. So discipleship really is giving of that biblical worldview to your child. So I want to encourage you to do that. Um, so there's the thing. It really, it really will be kind of fun. And so uh, I encourage you to get on there and do that. Thank you so much for letting Wendy and I teach class. Wendy, you sitting over here. Very glad that she didn't have to say anything tonight. Um, and so, yeah, she's very, she's very happy with that. Um, and so, uh, but we, I, I told Brianna when I walked in tonight, and Melinda, I have loved doing this. It has been so much fun to be with you guys and just to, to, to talk with you and see it what the great parents look like because great parents are the ones who come to stuff like this. So be encouraged, be very encouraged. You're doing a great job. So thank you for letting us do this. And um, you have my email from the homework last week. So if there's anything we can do for you, anything you need, something comes up, you have a question or something here at the church, let me know and we would be happy to help you, okay? So I'm going to pray real quick, and we're going to be done. Uh, I do want to invite you back next Wednesday. We're going to do a thing called a night at Corner Books. It's going to be in the main foyer all night. It's going to be really, really fun. Lots of live music. We're going to have booths out. If you want to get started in Christmas shopping, great place to do it. The ministry partners we have in Corner Books, which are ministries all over the world, are going to be here with booths selling the handmade things that their folks have, have made. And so you'll find some very unique Christmas gifts next week. So be here for that. We're doing that instead of classes. And so uh, come and just enjoy that and, and have a good time. All the kids stuff still going on next week. So your kids will have a place to go. Uh, so call it a date night. It'd be great. So, all right. Thank you guys. Let me pray for us and we'll be done. Jesus, I thank you that you know us so very well. God, I thank you that you love us perfectly, but you know we're not perfect. And so God, as parents, we just ask for your help. We ask for your wisdom. As Aaron said, Lord, we just pray and we just say, God, help us. We want to do good jobs as parents, but Lord, there's nothing more humbling than being a parent. There's, there's so many things we don't know. There's so many things we don't know how to do. There's so many things we don't know how to handle. And so, Lord, it keeps us coming back to you, but Jesus, thank you that you're always there. You're willing to help us. And so, Lord, I just pray your mercy and grace upon these families. Lord, I pray that you would give them wisdom and that you would just Help them to, to, to understand how you parent them and that they would then in turn parent their kids that way. Lord, thank you that um, they've taken the time to be a part of this. I just pray your blessings on their kids. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you all.